Camp Mula is without a doubt the best African hip hop group ever. At the moment, you are the biggest thing in Africa. When they were at their peak between 2010 and 2013, those guys were better than Davido, Whiskey, Diamond Platinum, and all the African superstars we know today, except P Square, of course. Everything they touch seemed to turn into gold from Party Don't Stop to Addicted. You see, addicted, you got my body lifted. Girl, you're so gifted, I never should have ifted to hold it down. F what a hater say, sipping on that hater raid. I'm tipsy of that tango ray and Alize, I'm hella paid to fresh all day. I see you mocking me, but I ain't mocking back. Cause I ain't got time for your chitty chat. It was all going well for them. Then suddenly their music careers went under the radar. So, what happened to Kam Mula and where are they now? Let's start with how they met. Founded in mid 2009, Kam Mula consisted of Teo Tripper, now just Teo, Sharperman, Miss Karun, now just Karun, Marcus, now Kuzma, Marcus doubled up as the group's producer, and Mikey Tony, their then manager. Teo and Marcus attended Hillcrest International School. They would then become friends due to their love for hip hop music. The two would later meet Sharperman through hanging out with mutual friends. And because Sharperman also liked to rap, they decided to form a team, but they didn't have a name for the group. At first, they were just freestyle rappers making ciphers and uploading them to Facebook. They would, they would do ciphers, they would make mixtapes, they, they had like a weekly thing that they did on Facebook where they would like release music. However, there was one missing piece to their puzzle. They needed a singer to bring their music to broader audience. That's when they were introduced to Karun by Marcus cousin, who was in the same school as Karun then. Uh, we got we got a blessing from above when Karun decided to join this little family of ours. And that's how Kamula was born. Money is the motive, music is the way. Kamula is the name. Their first song to gain radio airplay was Law, which debuted in 2009. Let's get low. Let's get low. But it's safe to say that Party Don't Stop is the song that catapulted them into international superstars. That, that took us from just like making music for our friends and high school people to all of a sudden touring in South Africa, UK, which we got nominated for BET Award, all because of that song. That was crazy. That was literally zero to 100 real fast. This and their subsequent works would earn them local and international nominations, including the BET Awards for Best International Act, becoming the first Kenyans ever to be nominated for the coveted award and the MTV Europe Awards for Best African Act. Sadly, as their popularity grew worldwide, so did the amount of haters. Kamula would frequently be criticized for making bubblegum music and not real hip hop. Uh, a lot of guys were criticizing us for bubblegum rap, whatever that is. So. Responding to those who doubted their rap prowess, the group dropped fresh all day in 2012. I see you mocking me, but I ain't mocking back Cause I ain't got time for your chitty chat You can call it bubblegum, but it's not <laughs> right. yeah. On 29th September 2012, the group released their debut studio album, Funky Town with Kolo as the only featured artist on Party Don't Stop Now tell us about this new Kamola CD I see you guys want a copy of this album Bring it in Funky Town, he has so much money that he got it for free. When you have so much money, they give it to you. After the success of Funky Town, cracks in their persona started to show almost immediately. Lead singer Karun and rapper Teo left the group in 2013 to pursue solo careers and further studies. After the departure of Karun and Teo, the group brought Tiri Murai, another singer and Marcus girlfriend, to replace Karun. We party like we get it paid tonight. Unfortunately, it did not work out. So 
So when I look back on Camp Mula and people ask me like, what happened? Why did you guys break up? Da, da, da. Each member has his or her own opinion as to why Camp Mula split. According to Karun, the group blew up very fast. And since they were too young, they didn't know how to handle the fame that came with it. She added that the Kenya music industry was also not set up for Kam Mula's style of music. At that time, I was 15. I don't know what happened. I just knew we didn't know what we were doing. We are international level superstars in an industry that has no structure. People mm. think that um, because Kamula didn't work out that that was a failure, but the industry wasn't set up in a way that I think was ready for what Kamula was. And that made everybody super unhappy. So we chose to step back. Teo cited different priorities and promises from external people that they couldn't keep are some of the reasons the group split. I can't really say regrets, lessons. Just be careful about who comes around. So there was people showing up with all sorts of sweet nothings and promises mm. because when we were more just in our own space, in our own world doing our thing, things were happening. We were making a song almost every day, like things were just moving. But as soon as you are now more in an environment where such and such a person is here, it dilutes the entire process, process of growth. As for Marcus, the group split as a result of different priorities. No, we just had different priorities at the time. I was going back to university, Miss Karen was going back to university. So that's what caused what had to happen. It will be interesting to hear Shapoman and Mikey's opinions on why the group broke up. On 10th September 2017, Kam Mula announced their return from hiatus during their reunion performance at the WEV concert at Ngong Rescos. They even promised an album that unfortunately never saw the light of day. In 2020, South African rapper Nasty C took to his Instagram page and called for Kam Mula to have a reunion and get back to the music scene. He wrote, I'd like to see Kamula do something. Every time I'm there, I'm always chilling with Sharper. I think they still have it in them and would love to see them do something, even if it's just a song. Something deserves to happen. Karun is arguably the only one from the Kamula group doing well in the music industry. She occasionally drops music on her YouTube channel and other music streaming platforms. She dropped an EP dub Catch a Vibe in 2021. She's now a mother as well. Marcus now runs their family recording studio, Sub Sahara Record, where almost all the Kamula songs were recorded. He too occasionally drops music that isn't really doing so well. Shapaman is also still making music, but like most Kamula members, he's struggling to make it in the ever-changing Kenya music industry. Teo no longer makes music. He's now a copywriter and a part-time DJ. Mikey, together with his friends, founded a recording studio and record label named Chumba Changoma in 2021. So would you like to see a Kambula reunion? Let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to follow us on TikTok and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. Bye. We love you. We love you very much. Oh.